एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल दी मेडिको लवर टुडे विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट ह्यूमरस इट्स फीचर एंड इट्स साइड डिटरमिनेशन सो द ह्यूमरस इज द बोन ऑफ द आर्म एंड इट इज द लॉन्गेस्ट बोन ऑफ द अपर लेम द ह्यूमरस इज डिवाइडेड इन बेसिकली थ्री पार्ट्स द अपर एंड द शार्ट व्हिच इज द मिडिल पार्ट एंड द लोअर एंड सो फर्स्ट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द अपर एंड there is a head which is directed medially backward and upward and it articulates with the glenoid cavity of the scapula and it uh, is about 1/3 of the sphere it means it is much larger than the glenoid cavity and you can see there is a line which separate the head of the humerus to the rest of the upper part so it is the anatomical neck as you see and the next thing is the lesser tubercle the lesser tubercle it's an elevation on the anterior aspect of the upper end the greater tubercle the greater tubercle is an elevation that forms the lateral part of the upper end and its posterior surface gives marks three impression the upper the middle and the lower and you can see clearly there is a groove which is present between uh, the lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle it's intertubercular sulci or bicepital groove the next is the surgical neck as you see the surgical neck is uh, separate the upper part of the humerus upper end of the humerus to the shaft so it's the surgical neck the next one is the shaft so you can see the shaft is rounded in its upper half and it is triangular in its lower half shaft has three borders and three surfaces the anterior border the lateral lateral border which you can see it's more prominent and the medial border so the upper anterior border you can see the upper one third of the anterior border is forms the lateral lip of intertubercular sulci and it forms and its uh, middle part it forms the anterior margin of the deltoid tuberosity here's the deltoid tuberosity so it forms the anterior border of the deltoid tuberosity the lower half of the anterior border is smooth and rounded the next is lateral border so lateral border as i already told you the lateral border is more prominent at its lower end where it forms the lateral supracondylar ridge so in its middle part it is interrupted by radial or spiral groove here is present radial or spiral groove the next is medial border this is the medial border so the upper part of the medial border as you see it forms the medial lip of intertubercular sulci this is a medial lip so it forms the middle part of uh, intertubercular sulci upper part the next is you can see uh, it is continuous below to the medial supracondylar ridge so let's talk about the surfaces of the shaft here is the interior lateral surface which is present between the anterior border and the lateral border the anterior medial surface which is present between the anterior border and the medial border the anterior medial surface it forms the floor of the intertubercular sulci the posterior surface which is present between the lateral border and the medial border so here is the posterior surface the next is lower end so we can divide the lower end in two parts the articular part and the non articular part 
so let's talk about first articular part the capitulum as you can see it is a rounded projection which articulate with the head of the radius capitulum the trochlea it's the trochlea so the trochlea articulate with the trochlear notch of the ala the next is non articular part medial epicondyle the lateral epicondyle so the medial epicondyle as you can see it is more prominent bony projection on the medial side of the lower end the lateral epicondyle as you see it is a smaller than medial epicondyle so it is a smaller and uh, it forms the lower lateral end of the humerus the next is as you see it's the uh, lateral supracondylar ridge the medial supracondylar ridge the next part is fossa so it is the coronoid fossa as you see and it is the radial fossa coronoid fossa is depression just above the anterior aspect of the trochlea as you see as i already told you this is trochlea and it's the coronoid fossa which is present just anterior so it accommodate when the coronoid process of the ulna when the elbow is flexed it means uh, the coronoid process of the ulna come closer to the coronoid fossa when the elbow is flexed the next is radial fossa which is also depression just above the anterior aspect of the capitulum this is a capitulum and its anterior aspect radial fossa is present so it also accommodate the head of the radius when the elbow is flexed next is you can see it's olecranon fossa which is present on the posterior surface so olecranon fossa lies just above the posterior aspect of the trochlea and it accommodate the olecranon process of the ulna when the elbow is extended so when the elbow is extended the uh, the olecranon process of the ulna comes closer to the olecranon fossa so the next is side determination how we determine the side of the humerus which one is right humerus and which one is left side humerus so for side determination of humerus you just have to see the head which is present medially and the second thing you have to see is the condyles so as i already told you the medial condyle is more prominent than the lateral condyle and the third thing you have to see is the olecranon fossa which is present posteriorly so this one is uh, the side determination of the humerus